In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on titrations by looking at polyprotic acids as well as pH indicators. So if you recall in the last video, when we were looking at titration curves, we were looking at monoprotic acids, acids that only dissociate to form one hydrogen ion per molecule. Polyprotic acids are acids that can form more than one hydrogen ion per molecule. For example, here we have carbonic acid. Carbonic acid can dissociate to form one hydrogen ion and a bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, however, can dissociate again to form a second hydrogen ion and carbonate. So carbonic acid is a diprotic acid. We can get two hydrogen ion molecules per carbonic acid molecule. Okay, so to see how a titration curve is different, we can have this diagram right here. The nice thing is when you look at the curve, you can immediately tell what's different from a monoprotic acid. So that makes it pretty obvious on the MCAT when you're dealing with a polyprotic acid. Now the main difference is that you have more than one half equivalence point and equivalence point. Tech, uh, basically you just have one half equivalence point and equivalence point per hydrogen ion that can be dissociated. So here I can draw half equivalence point number one as well as equivalence point number one. These two points that I have drawn in refer to the dissociation of the first hydrogen ion from carbonic acid. I can then draw in the second half equivalence point as well as the second equivalence point. These two points refer to the dissociation of the second hydrogen ion from bicarbonate. So that would, for instance, tell you that this pH value right here, this is the pKa of carbonic acid. And this pH value over here, this is the pKa value of bicarbonate. Okay, so now we look at, or now that we've looked at how polyprotic acids and their titration curves look alike, let's take a look at pH indicators. pH indicators are weak acid or base molecules that have different colors when they're protonated versus deprotonated. So as an example, I have here bromocresyl green. Here, when it's in its protonated state, which I've denoted as HIND, just some indicator molecule with a hydrogen ion on it, it's yellow. When it's deprotonated as IND minus, it is blue. Now, why is this helpful? Well, here we have the pKa. And remember, when you know the pKa, you can compare it with the pH to determine if your molecule is mostly protonated or is it mostly deprotonated. So you recall, if the pH is less than the pKa, your molecule is mostly protonated. Similarly, when the pH is greater than the pKa, your molecule is mostly deprotonated. And finally, if the pH is equal to the pKa, then it's 50-50. That means half of the molecules in solution are protonated and the other half are deprotonated. Knowing this information, let's take a look at a solution of bromocrystal green at different pH values. We can consider, for instance, a pH of 2, a pH of 3, pH of 4, pH of 5, pH of 7, and a pH of 10. And we start at a pH of 2, 2 is less than the pKa of 5. And when the pH is less than the pKa, that means the molecule is mostly protonated. And when it's protonated, our molecule is yellow. So that means at a pH of 2, we should have a yellow solution. How about at a pH of 3? Well, here at 3, the pH is still less than the pKa of 5, so your molecule is still mostly protonated, so still yellow. The same is also true at a pH of 4. pH is still less than the pKa, so our molecule is still mostly protonated, so the solution is still yellow. If we take a look at higher pKa values, like a pH of 10, now the pH is greater than the pKa of 5. 
and when the pH is greater than the pKa, your molecule is mostly depronated. And when it's depronated, we know our molecule is blue. So now our solution should also be blue. Similarly, at a pH of 7, this pH is still greater than the pKa, so our molecule is still mostly depronated and blue. So finally, we can consider a pH of 5. At a pH of 5, that's equal to the pKa, so our molecule is 50% protonated, 50% deprotonated. So that means it's half yellow, half blue. And the net result is you end up with a green solution. So this is how indicators can be used to tell you what is the pH of the solution. However, if you look at this, it's actually not that precise. All right. If you're above a pH of 5, it's always blue. If you're below a pH of 5, it's always yellow. So it actually tells you that pH indicators are actually only useful within a limited range of pH values. Specifically here, this can only tell you a pH change between 4 to 6, otherwise it's not useful. So because of that, it actually makes questions on the MCAT about pH indicators very simple. And all you have to do is pick the indicator with a pKa closest to the pH you're trying to measure. So always pick the indicator with the pKa closest to the pH you want to measure. And that's it for indicators.